وَكِتُبُنَا مَا شَاهِدِينَ آمين ربنا اجبر لنا ذنوبنا وإزرابنا في أمر أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستعليه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدلل ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam The title of my talk today is uh, Cancer Awareness Prevention and Care might surprise a lot of us that want to talk about this today. It is important a lot of the time to talk about these things because, I mean, research and evidence shows a lot of the time within our community as Muslims, we do not want to talk about illnesses or diseases. Even though diseases and illnesses are part of human reality, you know, Sometimes based on superstition, sometimes based on shyness. We don't want to talk about illnesses that affect us, especially serious diseases such as cancer, which is often treated as a stigma due to its deadly nature. Yet, by talking about it, we can become more aware about how to prevent it, and also how to take care of ourselves 
when we get here. And you know, Allah tells us in the Quran, life is full of tests. Allah says, for example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Quran chapter 2, ayah 155, وَلَنَبْلُوَ النَّقُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَالنَّقْسِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتُ وَالشِّمْرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah says from time to time, we will be testing you with something of fear. You know, when we hear cancer, we fear. We fear it. Because some time ago I talk about cancer, it means death. Allah says we will be testing you with some things of fear, hunger, and also reduction in life. You know, and reduction in your wealth, and reduction in your plantations. Allah says, but give glad tidings to those who are patient when these tests come. The test which Allah talks about in this ayah includes, it also includes sicknesses, different types of sicknesses. When sicknesses affect us, sometimes it might be due to the test of Allah, both the minor ones and the serious ones, such as cancer. Although Allah says in that ayah, what is Shabbat Shabbat Give glad tidings to those who are patient. That does not mean that we should not seek for treatment for our sickness. No. Allah is not saying that, well, because he says, when test comes, give glad tidings to those who are patient. It does not mean that we should not seek care for ourselves when we are sick. Actually, the Arabs traditionally believed this way. And therefore you find in the hadith, hadith, Al Usama ibn al-Shariq, radiallahu anhu qal, qalat al-Arab, ya Rasul Allah, Allah natadawa, you know the Arabs, the village Arabs came to the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They have just accepted Islam and they were asking the Prophet. Because you find in the Quran, Allah talks about tawakkul, putting your faith on Allah, uh, sabr, being patient when you are afflicted with their difficulties. So they ask the Prophet, Allah Natanawa, should we or should we not seek treatment for our illnesses? They kept to ask him, should we seek treatment for our illnesses? And the Prophet said, Naam, Ya Ibadullah. The Prophet said, Yes, O servants of Allah. And this goes to show that the Arab, that is the village Arabs who came to see the Prophet were believers. Because he answered him, said, Ya Ibadullah. He said, Oh, servants of Allah, Tadama wo, seek treatment. Because Allah has not created a disease except that He has created a cure for it. That's what the Prophet said. He said, Seek treatment for your illnesses. Because Allah has not created a disease except that He has created a, a, a shifa, a cure for it. Illa wahida, except one type of disease. And they asked the Prophet Allah, Ya Ya Rasulullah, wa ma huwa? O Messenger of Allah, which is that one? Which is that one disease for which there is no cure? And the Prophet Allah, Ya Rasulullah, said, Al-Haram, that is, growing old. Growing old itself, you know, sometimes it makes you weak, you have diseases of the old. He said, there is no cure for that. You have no cure. But other diseases, you know, and this is quite re relevant, it is poignant. The Prophet said this, so many years ago, seven centuries ago, I mean, in the seventh century, about four, about the thing, fifteen centuries ago, and it is quite relevant actually in relation to cancer. Many years ago, many years ago, you know, because of the level of knowledge all over the world, the thought was that there was no cure for cancer, that it has no cure, you know. But today, because of new knowledge, because of new research, and because of new knowledge about it. You know, there's not much improvement in cancer care. And we are not getting closer and closer to finding a full cure for it. Therefore, this confirms the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, when he said, That Allah did not create a disease except that he has created a cure for it. If we don't know it yet, we don't know it yet. Allah, I mean, as long as knowledge continues to come to us, you know, and I mean, there, there are so many hadith about this. There's another one narrated by Anas. He said, Inna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet said, 
ان الله عز وجل حيث خلق الداء خلق الدواء فتداوى. He said when Allah created diseases for every disease that Allah created Allah had created a cure for it. Therefore seek treatment. And and, and if you look at the Quran you'll also be able to see our knowledge about everything including treatment of diseases is, pro is, is state by state and progressive. Because knowledge doesn't come just once at a time. Hear what Allah says in the Quran, Your Lord has now given Allah was telling the Prophet, your Lord has now given you knowledge which you didn't know before. And by this, the grace of your Lord upon you is great. This goes to show that I mean, from time to time, Allah will increase us in knowledge about things. And therefore, the treatment and care and cure for cancer, you know, is becoming much more, I mean, knowledgeable now. And as I said, even up to today, Allah tells us, Allah will continue to teach you new things because Allah knows everything. So it's very, very essential, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, for us to bear this in mind. Disease, including cancer, there should be no stigma in it. A lot of the time, we shy away when we are ill or we have a very bad disease. Some people will bury their head in the, in, in the sand. They don't want to go to the GP, they don't want to talk about it, they don't want to seek treatment. But disease is not a stigma. If you look in the Quran, Allah talks to us about the Anbiya, the prophet who went before us. Sometimes when you read about it, you begin to think, why is Allah talking about this? For us to be able to learn, even the prophets, the Anbiya, they were afflicted with disease. If disease was a stigma, because the Anbiya, the prophets of Allah, they were Ma'asumi, that is, they were pure people. They were pure people whom Allah had eliminated. If disease was a stigma, Allah would not afflict them with diseases. They would never have suffered any disease at all. But if you look in the Quran and you look in the Sirah of the Anbiya, they went through diseases. For example, look at Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. When Allah was relating the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim, Allah also brought disease into it. Allah was telling the Prophet Allah said, What law alayhi never are Ibrahim? Allah said, Relate to them the story of Ibrahim. Allah told the Prophet, Allah said, Relate to them. Tell them about the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim. And Allah started talking about Sayyidina Ibrahim. Tell them about this. He said, and he, and Ibrahim was talking about Allah. That this is why he was Khalilullah. He was extolling Allah. You know, he was elevating Allah. And one of the things he was saying was that, Allah bi halakari wa huwa yahdi. It is he who created me and who direct me in the right path. It is he who feeds me when I'm hungry, and it is he who gives me water when I'm thirsty. And he said, And when I am sick, it is he who cares me. To show that Ibrahim, he knows, I mean, he was a prophet, he was Allah. He was closest to Allah. Yet, he experienced sickness. This is why he was saying that even when I'm sick, it is Allah who cures me. Look at Sayyidina Ayub in the Quran. Allah talks about Sayyidina Ayub in Surah Al Anbiya, Quran chapter 21, ayah 83. Allah says, Wa Ayub, I mean, the type of disease, if you look at if you look into the the type of disease that afflicted Sayyidina Ayub. Many of us may not be able to withstand it. But it is not a stigma. Allah will have hidden it. Don't let people know this is a stigma. But it is there in the Quran for us to be able to see, to know that sickness is not a stigma. Ayub called upon him. He didn't hide it. He called unto his Lord, saying that, Oh Allah, I am really, I'm really suffering from this affliction. And you are the most merciful of those who are merciful. Look at the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also went through sicknesses. If you look in the Sira, at one time fever caught the Holy Prophet Muhammad seriously. That in Medina, he sat in the top and was telling the Sahara to pour cold water on him. For the fact that, I mean, the fever has really, really affected him. Similarly, in Hadith Qudsi, every one of us to know that it is, it is, sickness is not a stigma, no matter how serious it is. Allah says in Hadith, uh, in Hadith Qudsi, in one Hadith Qudsi, 
when Allah, in, in, when Allah was talking about himself to Allah, say, yeah, 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 Allah was talking, and one of the things which Allah says that, kullukum maridun illa man shafaitu. Allah says, all of you are sick people, except he who are healed. So whether you talk about it or not, sickness is one of the things through which Allah, you know, shows his greatness to us. Allah never falls sick, you know, but he uses sickness actually to indicate to us his power. In another hadith, you could see, you know, he says, on Yom Al-Qiyam, Allah will, Allah will tell, Allah will tell him, Adam, you know, O oh, son of Adam, says, I, 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 when you were in the world, I was sick, but you didn't visit me. Allah will say that, I was sick, but you didn't visit me. And Ibn Adam will say that, oh Allah, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth, how can you get sick? And he will say that, well, did, didn't you hear that my, my, my servant, Fulan of Fulan, was sick? If you had visited him, you would have found me with him. You see, I mean, that, that goes to show. And visiting a sick person, there's a lot of reward in it. And this is why it indicates that you don't hide sickness. It's not a sickness, it's not your fault. Including cancer. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it is very, very essential for us to appreciate this. You know, based on knowledge and research, today people are living longer with cancer. So we didn't need to hide them. Look at, for example, I mean, there's a lot of information on this on the, on the web. An organization called Macmillan Cancer Support. I mean, it's a very big charity supporting people with cancer. If you look on its website, it says that today in the UK, there are 2.5 million people living with cancer in the UK today. And they say that as more people live longer, and based on research, you know, as more people continue to live longer with their cancer, this number is going to grow up to 4 million by the year 2030. So we are able to see that there's a lot of advances in it. And therefore, we need to talk about it for people to know. Because within our community, within Muslim, you know Muslim, within our community, you know people who are suffering from different types of diseases, including cancer, but they don't want to talk about it. And therefore, they don't have knowledge about how actually to take care of themselves. Today, knowledge and education about diseases indicate that there are two main ways by which cancer can be cared, can, can be looked after. One of them is preventing you know, early diagnosis. And in both ways, in relation to preventive and caring, evidence has shown that in both levels, Muslims, Muslim communities, black, Asian, and uh, minority, we are, but in both ways, we hide. In relation to early diagnosis, to prevent, you know, people will be, some people will be having symptoms like this. Sometimes due to ignorance, people don't know the symptoms. Sometimes they know, but they don't want to go to the GP. And evidence has shown that early diagnosis is actually the best way to prevent the fatality of these diseases. You know, and we, we talk about, I mean, preventing, if you look in the Quran, I mean, there's this, I mean, um, um, prevent, preventive measures. The principle of preventive measures is very, very well established in the Quran. You look in the Quran, many parts of the Quran, if you read and you understand, you know, it's about preventing measures. Many things about preventing measures. Even, for example, when, when Allah says, La takara bu zina, don't go near zina. You know, inna fahishatan wasa'a sabila. It is a very bad thing and it can take you to hellfire. It's a prevent, Allah says, don't go near it. It's a preventive measure. Don't go near it so that you don't go to hellfire. So it's preventing. So preventive measures. Uh, you find it so much in the Quran. You know, and Allah tells us about ourselves. Allah says, La taqutubu anfusakum. Inna Allah kana bikum rahima. Allah says, don't kill yourselves because Allah is very merciful to you. Don't kill yourselves. Allah is very, very merciful to you. Allah is merciful to you because he gives you signs, symptoms, before the disease kills you. If you ignore the symptoms, it, will, you ignore the symptoms. it means you are not following the injunctions of Allah. Don't kill yourself. Allah is merciful to you. 
If you begin to see the symptoms, you know, a lot of the time, especially we men, we believe in, we believe that we are macho. You are, well, I'm still strong. You don't want to, you know, this small thing, you don't want to treat it. You don't want, you want to go to the GP. So it's very, very essential, you know. We should try as much as possible to take our own affairs, our health, into our hands. Allah says, don't use your own hands to put yourself into perishing. Don't perish yourself by your own hands. You know, when you have symptoms, you have to quickly try as much as possible to go and have a checkup. There are various types of cancers. And perhaps maybe, you know, the reason these diseases, when they strike, usually are, is, are private to us. And therefore, sometimes you feel shy, you don't want to have symptoms of them. Particularly for men, there have been a lot of campaign about prostate cancer. You know? And the symptoms, a lot of the time, people will ignore it. And examples have shown that when you are able to quickly go for checkup when you see the symptoms, at the early stage, you know, it can be taken care of and you will live a normal life. But if you don't, and it aggravates, that is where the problem lies. And the problem, the symptoms usually, I mean, it comes, I mean, you are urinating, difficulty in urinating, you urinate, you stop, you sleep, you have a lot of information on it. If you have this type of symptoms, you know, you have to go to see your GP. It might be nothing, but try as much as possible to rule out, maybe there will be something. So it's very, very essential, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, you know, I just decided that we need to talk about this today so that we get awareness of it. In, in society, you know, people do talk about them, they do, they do talk much more about it now. We should also inculcate this within our community to ensure that we talk about it. For our mothers, for women, as I said, similarly, cancer will strike in private parts, in the breast, breast cancer. You know? There's a lot of studies out there that women should check their breasts. If you feel that there's a lump, quickly go for a checkup. At the early stage, it can be handled. You know, don't bury your head in the sand until it gets aggravated. Women against cervical cancer. You know, also in the private part. I've heard, I mean, some people would continue to. A lot of the time, I mean, this is what we are saying. Is Islam <coughs> says that we should seek. It is not, it's, there's nothing wrong in people asking questions. But a lot of the time, it is good to ask questions so that people get the right answers. A lot of the time, people begin to think that, well, Islam goes to the extreme. I've heard people asking me several times, which is good, we are women. You know, you know, these days in the UK, if you look in, in living, if there's opportunities for us. My wife receives such letters. We know if you have women, we have women. Say, normally, when a, when a woman is having from 15 years up, they will be sending letters to them to come for to do the smear test, cervical smear test, to see to rule out for preventative measures. So Muslim women don't go. Our first of all, is it is it is it Islamic for me to go for the smear test when I know nothing is wrong with me? You know, it's 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 an opportunity. You know, for you to be able to rule these ones out. Islam does not prevent you from doing those tests. You know, because you have an obligation to look after yourself. You know what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? He said, In the haftari. Your body has a right over you in relation to your health. Your body has a right for you to take care of it. Don't neglect it. The health which Allah has given you is an amana. You must look over it. So when we have opportunities like we have here, you have to take them up. You know, don't let us fall into one mistake which Allah calls our attention to a lot of the time. A lot of the time, many times, by our own negligence, by our own doing, we put ourselves in difficult situations. And we say, Qadar Allah Masha. That is Allah has Qadar Abis. Whatever Allah says in the Quran, if you look in Surah to Shura, Quran chapter 42, ayah 30, Wama Asa can do a lot in relation to the type of diseases that affect us, including cancer. For example, exercising, you know, many Muslims 
Sometimes they will have, even ask questions about exercise. Is it uh, halal to do exercise? <laughs> it's important. These are important things. You know, if you read the Sarah process, that the prophet used to do the other. He will run. He will run with Aisha. You know, they will run, race. <coughs> to show. And the prophet, and he said in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the one hadith, Al-Muslim qawwi ahabbu illa Allah bila muslim da'if. Yes, Allah, he said that the strong, the healthy Muslim, Allah loves the healthy Muslim better than the weak, sickly Muslim. Even though both of them have goodness in them. But you always want to be the best. So it's very, very essential. Exercising can help us. See your GP when it's necessary. You mean here, I mean, things are changing down in London. But those of us who live outside London, I mean, if you have not gone to see your GP for about six months, in my own place in Crydy, you get a phone call from your GP. They will call you and say, that, ah, we, we see you, you have not been here for so long. They want you to come to, in, I went, the other time I went, to, I, I went to see the optician. I took my glasses, the glasses, I mean, normally the optician will write you a letter after one year to come back. And I didn't go because my glasses were still okay. I just went about last week, which is about two years. And the lady optician was telling me, he said, your glasses are still okay. But you have to come. It is not about changing your glasses. You have to come. When we write a letter for you to come after one year, we are not taking anything from you. It is just to check the healthy situation of your eyes. He said, yes, your glasses is two years now. But you don't need to change it because it is still effective. But you need to come every year in order to look at the health situation of your eyes. So it's very, very essential that, you know, we take our health seriously. The second element is the care aspect. Sometimes, no matter what you do, you can still get sick. And people in our community, you know, the Muslim community generally, we have people who have cancer within our communities. Who are being, you know, diagnosed with one type of cancer or the other. Today, in the UK, as we said, there are different organizations that are really doing so much in relation to, you know, providing specialist care for cancer management. And one of them is, I mean, the Macmillan, Macmillan Cancer Support. It is very, very important for Muslims to make use of sex charity organizations. If you look on their website, they are doing so much work. I mean, in 2016, Macmillan was said to have invested over 160 million pounds for cancer support and services. Many Muslims don't benefit from it, you know? Many Muslims don't benefit from it. And when a person has cancer, it has so many dimensions. Not only the physical aspect of it, of the disease, it also has psychological dimensions to it. And this is why organizations like Macmillan, I mean, we cannot do it within our community here ourselves. It's a specialist area. Organizations like Macmillan provide. So we need to let our people know, you know, Evidence shows that Muslims don't patronize this, you know, in just one, over 160 million pounds used in care, even though there are Muslims who have these type of diseases. So it's very, very essential. In order to make sure this happens, you know, there's an organization now called the Baraka Trust. And, you know, sometimes experience is the best teacher. The Muslim brother who instigated this, I mean, uh, from East London, was somebody whose child, had cancer. She eventually died, but while she was sick, they got a lot of support. He said, I mean, from Macmillan, he said they didn't actually know that such support could be provided. That without them, they could never have coped at all. <coughs> Both psychologically and physically. You know? So you find out that, I mean, the, the, the mosques in East London and uh, this bar, they are partnering now with Macmillan. You know? In order to encourage Muslim community usage of sex services and support. We in our mosque here, as are also, we are also keying in into that partnership to promote awareness in our community here. You know, we don't have the expertise, but we are trying to partner to ensure that we can benefit from these services. Many things are being done. You know, Macmillan normally does what they call the coffee afternoons. In partnering with them, we'll be doing a coffee afternoon here on September 30th, whereby people can come 
the specialist will talk to you. I've got support is available if you know anyone. You know, between 2 and 3 p.m. And it will also be an opportunity also to raise donations. You know what Allah says in the Quran, Ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa. Cooperate in goodness and piety. We see this as a very good initiative. This is why this, is why this must is clean into it. So during the coffee afternoon here, to create awareness on the 30th of September, we are all invited to come. I'm not saying that you have if you come, it doesn't mean you have cancer. Don't run away, don't be scary about it. There's a lot of superstition. You know, there's not a lot of superstition about, about it. But come, so that you learn. Nobody, you don't know what is going to happen to you tomorrow. Or somebody near you, near your right or your left. You need this information. And even if you never get sick about it, you can put whatever you can in, in order to assist those who are going through that type of situation. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, please bear this in mind. Sickness is not a stigma. We pray Allah not to afflict us with sickness that we cannot afford. May Allah continue to make us sound and healthy. بعد الله إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. In the second part of my khutbah, I want to narrate to you a couple of hadith in relation to the importance of looking after our health. In one hadith, an hadith you know very well, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم you know, this is a very, very important, I mean, um, uh, counsel which the Prophet gave to one of his Sahaba called Ab 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 Abu Zar. The Prophet said, Ya Abu Zar. He said, Oh Abu Zar, if they tell him, Khamsan Kabla Khams, make sure that you look after five things before the other five comes to you. The first one, Shabab Kabla Haram. Look after your youth before old age eats you. The second one, Wasihatak Kabla Sakh. Look after your health before in health, isn't it? So you are able to see great, great, great counsel. And that goes to show that we will all experience it. You will experience youth, you will experience old age. Look after your youth before old age comes. And you will experience health, you will experience illness. Look after your health before illness comes. And look after your wealth before poverty comes to you. You know? You have go through it. You have wealth today, tomorrow you might be poor. And look after your free time when you have time on your hands. Look after it. Cherish it before lack of time hits you. You know? And treasure your life before death. Before death this is it. So all these five, what I'm talking about is, you know, this are the prophet talks about us looking after our health. You know, a lot of the time, what the prophet speaks like a physician. Even though we we'll all go through sickness, but the truth is this, medical science shows it. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I, I mean today, knowledge about all these things, if you look at the net, if you look on the NHS sites, you'll be able to see information. If you are somebody, actually, who takes good care of your health, you maintain a healthy lifestyle. You eat healthy food. You exercise. You things like do things like that. If sickness eats you, for the fact that you are looking after your health, the impact of the sickness will not be as great as somebody who has not been looking after his health. And this is why the brothers said, "Look after your health before sickness comes." So it's very essential that we look after our health. You know, and in other words, like. The Prophet said, The Prophet said there are two benefits. You know, there are two benefits which people, you know, do not look after very well. They, they take it for granted. There are two benefits which when we have them, human beings will take it for granted. The, the first one of it is health. 
and good health. We take good health for granted. You know, somebody will tell you that, well, no, I don't need to do it, I don't need to do this. I, I, we take it for granted until six days. Well, for us, and also, you know, time. When we have time, we take it for granted. We don't use it properly until when it reaches a point that we do not have time. You know, there's a lot of information on the internet, as I've said, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. On the NHS website, you get to see so much. You know, as Muslims, we know that prayer is important. Prayer, praying is important. I say, now nah, you did. But for serious illnesses, as I've shown in Hadith, we need to look after them. There was one occasion I was in Nigeria, sometime I traveled to Nigeria, and I need to say this for us because people have this type of notion. It was an Islamic, an Islamic occasion, and we were there, and one of, one of the scholars who was invited to speak, you know, he was extolling Allah, he was talking about the power of Allah and things like that. And you know, and he hit a nerve in me. Towards the end, he said today there are many people who are sick. This is exactly what he said. He said there are many people who are going through illness. And they say there are certain illnesses. You have to, like hypertension and things like that, you have to take medicine throughout your life. He said if you are a Muslim who believe Allah, you don't need all that. Just say like Allah 70,000 times in water and drink it. <laughs> well, my what he was saying to me. Well, I was sitting there. My body, it hit a nerve. I was just thinking, should I talk, should I not talk? <laughs> You know, some people are telling me that, oh, I say, if I go to talk to him behind the scenes, it doesn't benefit the people he's trying to mislead. So when he finished, it was, it, it was a level in which I am held a high esteem. I said, I have just one word to say. And I got up, I, I said, well, what Muhammad have said about the power of the Kanata Shahada, I don't deny it. Kanata Shahada is very, very popular. But mother, Fathers, any one of you who is suffering from hypertension or, 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 or diabetes, don't ever leave your medicine. Mm -hmm. Saying la ilaha illallah is water, it's made, but it is not meant for that purpose. You know? So therefore, prayer can work, but we should not deceive ourselves. If you have serious ailments, you have serious symptoms, just pray as I did. But in case of serious diseases such as cancer, it is important that we take proactive action. When you have symptoms, visit your doctor. When you have it, seek specialist care, as we are saying, that such as McMillan I mean, provides, either in form of preventive measures or treatment when necessary. Do not forget the warning of Allah. When I've talked to you, I'm full of home. In Allah, can I a Do not kill yourselves. Allah is very, very necessary. So may Allah continue to increase us in good health. Amen. May Allah continue to give us long life and good health, inshallah. Before we make the dua, there are two announcements. We are cordial. We are in the name of the Lord. 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 We are in the name of the ربنا ربنا لا تواجزنا إن سينا أخطأنا ربنا ربنا ولا تعمل علينا إسرا كما ملته على الذين من قبلنا